Hello guys, this is your favorite Vigilator in Path of Exile, and this episode will be about going through Act 7. We just took care of the Brian King and Ray Lamrod, brought us straight here to the forest encampment. Previously, the camp was, uh, uh, well, almost next uh, to Merve's cavern. Now we had to go uh, a bit around and uh, it seems that uh, the people here adapted the bridge used by Craig. Let's get going! Judging by that rather curious ship and its aberrant captain, I imagine you had rather an interesting voyage here. Now, Inquisitor Maligaro, we must have his soul. He has most certainly returned to his old haunt, yet his manifestations are like wisps on the wind. They are one moment, gone the next. While I am familiar with the phantasmal trails and tributaries that filigree this reality, Maligaro's yeah. exact whereabouts salutes me. You should speak with these desperates who cling to this broken bridge, that young Templar scholar in particular. Their mundane knowledge must provide where my enlightened sapiens cannot. Okay. There was a time before the beast, bathed in the shadows of lost memory, when men and women like you could ascend. Through rareness of quality and the adoration of their people, these few could reach out into the quickening mists of immortality and grasp the power of godhood. Mind you, transcendence is not yeah. easy. Like the pains of childbirth, it reeks of agony, tragedy, and sacrifice. The sacrifice most often being of one's humanity. That is simply the way of it. Those of us who seek the immortal throne live long enough to see ourselves become truly monstrous. Mm -hmm. Judging by that rather curious ship and its effort. What'll I do now? This here broken bridge speaks to me so. A fair place to rest me old bones for a bit. And tell you what, with all this sunlight and fresh air, I can feel the calling forth of the poetic muse beneath me trousers. Been a long time since I felt this here compass point in any direction. Speaking of navigations and the like, a long time ago, I had me a nice collection of riches stuffed away in a lockbox. Okay. Being the stupid ass that I am, I buried the thing one eve when I was high in my cups. Can't for the death of me remember where I... Except, I knew it was near this broken bridge. The box has a silver locket in it. Holds the portrait of my late wife, Meredith. It's the last thing I have in this world to remember her by. If you happen across my lockbox in your travels, I'd be appreciating. Easy, easy. Fair winds and calm seas. Uh -huh. Ah, yes. You do seem to have a penchant for presenting yourself when times are at their most uh, perplexing. It would seem that our Almighty has forsaken us. False deities from ages past now rise and ravage while our blessed innocence remains as silent as the stones at my feet. So much for Templar propaganda, eh? Well, I suppose if we are to fend for ourselves, then I should answer your troubling arrival with our own most pressing oh. tribulation. The relic that washed ashore and started all the chaos. It was covered in ancient Val inscriptions. The symbols were much weathered, making them challenging to translate. Yet I did my best. The inscriptions spoke of the god Ralakesh. If this object somehow housed the spirit of that many-faced monstrosity, then I fear we are all in danger. 
Rallakesh was renowned for his penchant for subjugation and control. Please, I urge you to destroy this god before his strength and dominance grow insurmountable. Nip this divine threat in the bud, as it were. Our poor friend, Grust, has likely become Rallakesh's avatar in this world. At least his recent behavior would indicate as much. Huh. If you could see to Grust's um, passing, Rallakesh will be forced to retreat in the Poor relic. stupid Grust. Destroy the relic, and perhaps you will also destroy the god. The end of learning is the beginning of death. You arrive. The great spirit spoke in my dreams, told me that darkness would again drown our lands, and you, exile, would walk before the flood. Mm. But what is this? You are not alone. A shade, a memory, older even than... No, older than spirit? Fear grips my throat. I shake, but the spirit drapes a warming cloak upon my shoulders. This ancient ghost that follows you, it has the trust of the spirit. And if the spirit Aww. trusts, then I trust. Go with the spirit. Turn your back for the barest moment and Rayclast bites you in the proverbial. I imagine that's how you're feeling upon visiting us this time. It's how I feel about now. I'm afraid that the Inquisitor's spirit has indeed returned to the Chamber of Sins. Yet while you won't encounter mm. Navarro by wandering his halls, I do perhaps know how you can find him. Whilst investigating the Fell Shrine, I learned of the existence of a map forged by Melagaro from his own viscera. What? This map allowed him to transfer his spirit into another form of existence, an existential safe house to which he could retreat should death ever attempt to take him. Understanding the map's purpose, Vol tried to destroy it, to no avail. So he locked it away deep within the ruins of Frisia Cathedral. Find that map and place it upon the reverie device in Melagaro's old laboratory. And when you step over that threshold, Expect the very worst. Shit. Anyone else? Go with courage. We've got a new uh, league related NPC. Thank the gods. You're no saint, I can see that. Though, who am I to question what form divine providence comes in? I am the great Alva Valai, reliquarian. Alva Valai. Mm. A seeker of mysteries, explorer of the unknown, lover of all things that glitter, and I need your help. The lost temple of Atsuwasu. Halls lined with finery, boxes stuffed with glimmering riches, and relics touched by insurmountable power. For eons lost to history until now. Ah. <sighs> Location lies in the Val City, which until very recently was submerged and completely unreachable. But with all that's going on, the city has risen from the depths and, well, it's still completely unreachable. It seems the only way to even get close is across the river, and the only crossing is overrun with bandits. I have a plan that could make both of us unbelievably wealthy, but perhaps one. Perhaps one day. Let's get back to Elena. Don't get me wrong, I've witnessed many unsettling things in my lifetime, but a spectral corsair living next door to me? We reside in dark times indeed when the living need share their quarters with the dead. I didn't think it possible oh, to, right. to grow any more peculiar, but then I've been wrong about so many things since coming to Rayclast that I shouldn't have been at all surprised. Still, it's interesting that his behavior of late has mirrored that of certain Templar zealots I had the dubious pleasure of meeting back in Theopolis. Hmm. Like them, Silk appeared obsessed with finding answers to this reality in some ethereal realm of divinity. For my part, I prefer to keep faith in this world. The answers that come from beyond are seldom the ones we want. My poor Grust, a kind man, 
A strong man. Mm. And now, I begged him not to meddle with that relic. It washed ashore after the earthquake, and Groost simply had to know whether it was a danger to us. To me. The unholy thing within that device. It possessed Groost, turned him into a monstrosity. We fled the village, and as I turned back, I saw he was killing them. The stragglers, killing them all, even the children. Ah, she went uh, Skywalker on them. <laughs> Please, destroy it. I'm aware that you and Groost had something of a commercial relationship prior to his accident. As is the Asmeri custom, Groost's few possessions have now passed to me. So, I'm by no means the warrior he was. There was a tension between them. Well. He wasn't heavy really fond of them. And, and then bang! To love. Farewell. My heart weeps for our old home. But what the spirit gives, we must embrace. The spirit, it claims who it needs to. When it needs to, there is no sense in sadness. Hmm. I watch Silk for many days, scurrying to this old Val stone, scurrying to that old Val ruin, always muttering. He talked and talked and talked, yet I heard no one answer. The spirit warned that I should stay away from him. Oh. It pained me. Silk is my friend, yet I must listen to spirit. I go from Silk's side, and now he is gone from mine. I do not know where Silk go, but I see him in dreams. He is caught in great spider web that stretch into darkness. And that spider web, it is full of bones. More bones from more people than I ever see in my life. If you find Silk, please free him from the web. Don't let him become bones like the rest. Reclast has changed. Once, I knew my place in this world. I knew my place in my spirit. Now, doorways have opened. Doorways I can neither see nor touch, but through which the spiritless ones pass all the same. The spiritless ones must be driven back. Their doors must be closed. May the great spirit guide you in your battles against these ancients that mean us nothing but ill. I belong to no one but the spirit. I have no need for the sweet words and caresses of a ghost. Waylam, he makes me laugh, and he hears the voice of the spirit. Not in the same way I do. The spirit speaks of the great waters beyond this land. He pays heed to the spirit, and the spirit loves him for it. I do not. It is better to speak to the dead than no one at all. Wellem knows the spirit, but he will not know me. Remember to live. What would you like to know, exile? Yes, Ralakish, the god of many faces. I read about this uh -huh. god when I looked after the museum in Theopolis. It said he was obsessed with governance, in particular the control of humanity through our base animal instincts. He ruled over the citizens of one unfortunate Val city. Alas, the name escapes me. Yet I do recall that his experiments brought his subjects to the brink of extinction, and that he was forced to enslave many a primitive Asmerian of the time so as to repopulate his domain. Though I shudder at the thought, I can only imagine that Ralikesh has rather similar plans now. It started with a few mumblings in his slumber, then long forays into the wilds, searching for relics of a distinctly arachnid nature. I thought it a natural extension of Silk's eccentric persona at first. Ah. Then came the sleepless nights studying those relics, the fevered recitations in broken Valish, the strange eight phase rituals. Then one night shows for his collection it's either and like, yeah. into the darkness without a word. 
Silk has always been susceptible to fine fictions. Perhaps he has finally shunned reality altogether. A fascinating case that flies in the face of all that is natural. Whalem is undead for sure. Something we have in spades in Rayclast. But a sentient, reasonable ghost? Now that is rare indeed. When we talk, I feel as if I'm staring into the breach, witnessing that which man was not meant to know. I have theorized about what animates the pirate's essence, how he manages to manifest on this earth once again. I think I shall compile my observations and speculations into a book. Into a book? Yes. Ah! Eremir's Elucidations of Undeath. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Uh, Keep your wits about you. I wouldn't say that. Ah, it's a bit of an embarrassing affair, truth be told. Thought I could return to the golden days, you know. Be a terror of the high seas like in my youth. <laughs> Problem was, they'd all forgotten me. Those young blighters sailing about, they had no clue who I even were. Figured if I could complete another great feat, I'd slay that sea bitch Mervale. Maybe that had earned me my respect back. <sighs> Suppose I don't need to tell you. That girl is stronger than she looks. <sighs> All it took were one slip of the old hands, and next I knew the black crest ripped against the coast, and I'm getting myself eaten alive by that hag. Peeled each separate muscle from my bones, she did. So what are you, you doing here? I, I know Lily be missing me something great, and it cuts me deep not to go visit the lass. Thing is, I reckon she should remember me as I was, not wretch at the sight of the specter I be now. Let the legend live on in her mind, I say. It's hard to really imagine that someone was actually killed by a neighbor. Nina's a pretty young thing, ain't she? Bosoms to eclipse the sun she has. <laughs> Might be that I spent some time here. Get to know the lass a tad more. Never mind that she's young and alive and I be... Uh, old and dead. Once she hears me poetry, that is. Not a girly alive who won't want for a bit of the old rot tooth once he breaks out the uh, tongue twisters and word plays. <laughs> Not that she'd likely hold much interest in an old ghost like me. Still, man can dream. Yeah. Lassie. Pretty on the eyes, I reckon. But she's got her knickers pulled up far too high. Bit uptight, if you ask me. Eremir, though he's a tad dull, tends to ramble on a bit. Still, he's a few yeah. interesting stories of his own. So it might be worth chewing the fat with from time to time. Think of the worst place ye can imagine. That's Pondium. Now think of the gods be damned best whorehouse you've ever had the pleasure of. <laughs> That's Pondium. Ah. Paradise full of bodies to stab, holes to fill, and devious liquor to imbibe. Brine rots control the whole island and make sure it lives up to the lowest of expectations. Can't imagine much has changed since I was there last. Still, it's a good place to swash your buckle and make love to a bawdy buxom bunter out back of a boozy The bastard would be thrilled for such an alliteration. Aye, them brain rats be a nasty bunch. Led by me very own flesh and blood, me baby sister Lucy. The Rot Mother, they call her now. Used to be that I were their leader, back when the Brine Rots were about one thing, and one thing only, raiding, pillaging. 
and plundering their scrawny black goods out. Old Lucy were me first mate for years. But she got her whiff of the power that being captain could gain her and mutiny huh. me, me own sister. Drop me on some deserted island of the coast of somewhere. Uh, bitch. Took months to make it back to the mainland. That brine rot clan's been trouble ever since. Used to have some good old fashioned pirate on them. And now they're raving mad lunatics out for their next fix of fear and fortune. Fair wind. We went through the inside and. Uh... Time for exploring now. First, let's go to the road. Oh, slime is there. Couldn't agree more. Okay, here's the door to the crossroads. some animals here with the parasite on them. Where did you lose it, you old man? Shit. Greetings. Selena. The colors don't really match my preference. Eh? 
Go with courage. Me look it! <laughs> oh, me darling. Me beautiful melody. How I miss your shuddering bosoms. Your quivering thighs. You're okay, okay. I get the idea. Well, we actually opened the lockbox, took the medallion, so there shouldn't be anything else that you can, you know, go through. <sighs> so, uh, crossroads uh, and to the crypt or uh, crossroads and uh, the old forest encampment. Only that shitty fire orb makes the same sound as something interesting coming out, so yeah. Hmm. Let's start with the clip. Animal hunting. Be hunted, exile. This one is captured. I now will take it. 
three more. Hope they're gonna be on the road. Not really, oh well. So, we need to find Marigato's map, and we are also supposed to do a trial here. Do not worry, little beast. Five we are friends now. Rogue Exile. Oh, he's gonna die fast. Got a chaos orb, guys. Great value. As I do. Okay, we got the trial spot. Fear gnaws at the entrails of the faithful and the faithless alike. Fear of the unknown, fear of the future. An empire requires leadership that can assuage those fears through example, through wisdom, through strength. An emperor lights the way through the darkened caverns of uncertainty. Uh huh. Whoever. It's good that we have Einhard here. Because he's providing us with additional healing. Nope. Nope. 
No. to go What do we have here? We have a sarcophagus. The sarcophagus was present in the level before, so while we were there for the first time, plot-wise, but it wasn't accessible because, well, ah, why were we to enter or, you know, check a sarcophagus? Ah. Yeah, he certainly has a thing uh, for spiders. Just as sick. Container of sins. Oh! Maligaro's map. Certain maps can only be rendered in the most vivid visceral. Funny guy, isn't he, huh? One more. So, Vol had the idea to hide the mask, mask, shit, uh, to hide the map in the temple, to make it impossible for Maligaro to be able to escape death. Was it supposed to work like that? Hmm. And what's the actual outcome? Vol died a couple of centuries ago and Maligaro, if he was sentenced to him to death he was alive in the beast anyway creepy shit no logic no answer there. Oh, 
Well, now the man's dead. If I met that guy in any other circumstances, I would be freaked out. And the worst thing is that he would probably kill us without any problem there. You see the way the guy is hunting? He would probably take care of, of that. Tava just like that, you know, just like one of those spiders. Uh. After we took care of uh, innocence. And uh, basically, while preparing ourselves for the, for innocence, while going through his chamber, it's actually the last time that we had some proper lore introducing items. Now we like going through another act, and there's nothing. Some single items talking about some uh, events from the past or more or less present, given some insight about the douchebaggery of uh, the gods. Uh, a letter in a battle about pranking, another shitty letter about the pranking, and uh, nothing serious. Maybe because, well, if you're fighting guards, uh, does anything else really matter? My interest in this world is dwindling. Most children begin their lives wide-eyed, amazed at what this world has to offer. I have always been different. Since the day I was born, I've been searching for the new, the surprising, that which disturbs both senses and mind. Oh, to be an artist! What a lamentable task, not seeing the world as it is, but as it should be. This is the worst of it, a disgusting state of stagnation fit only for the weak and vapid, far confusion terror, 
love and passion. These things are closest to the world gets to be interesting and alas, I have felt them all. Yet all this pale in comparison to the delightful chaos I have envisioned for this poor dull world. We have the map device. We have woven a tale together in days past. Perhaps we shall again. We make mighty stories, you and I. And now I have daunting task before me. The last in my great journey. Near to us, cast in shadow, a monster of mm. ice. Black Death is his name. A beauteous eight leg. Twisted grotesque by the master of these loathsome halls. I wish to give this eight leg the merciful peace he deserves, and to save what is still beautiful, the elixir that only Black Death can make. Hmm. Please, will you find him? Kill this Black Death. Take the eight leg's venom for me. Hmm. I may be fearsome warrior, but Black Death's yeah, master has made him warrior, my more ass. monstrous than even I can best. Who knows? Perhaps Black Death is too strong even for you. Hmm. How be you, Exile? I have climbed the great eight leg web. I know the eight legs like no other. This eight leg, this hmm. Black Death is one of the oldest and most fearsome eight legs in all this land and beyond. To its shame, it was made pet, plaything by the malicious master of this place. For years countless, it grew with pain. Pain is all it knows, all it can understand, all it can give. End Black Death's pain for all and once. My great journey led me to places of great power beyond even your stories, great dreamer. I am carried on legs and webs and shit. That is all you can know for now. Greetings, Exile. Mm. Hello. How be you, Exile? Do you see what he's wearing? Shit. Why would we want to go to the Chamber of Sins, the second level, in the first place? Oh well. Greetings, Exile. Ah, one way ticket. Maligaro Sanctum? Here we come! Then oh. that's how he imagines the world. Shit. Well, the creep factor of this place is quite high.
But at least we are prepared for the attacks. Disgusting. Yeah, I'm sure that's uh, Maligaro with his spike. While he, while he was looking still more or less human. to be careful with running like that. Maligaro's workshop. Maybe you can level up before entering it. Ah. Fifty seven. Hello. Oh, what a shame. He can be frozen. Let's hear it. You've got any more friends? Nope. Crimson Raymond.
construction is completion. Now only the wretched Dodrid Darkton remains. Unlike her compeers, who, in undeath, have yearned for the familiar, Dodrid appears drawn to the old wounds of calamity. The hmm. cataclysm took some, and left much that a parasite like Dodri might enjoy. I shall meet you in summer, where I hope you shall make swift and bloody work of that foul hag. The Black Venom. Oh, great dreamer who has done great deeds. I shall see to it that my queen rewards your queen? You honor and mercy when she rises up to claim what is hers. Mm, mm, Yet, mm. This elixir, so aged and potent, shall be life-giving draught that she sips upon first waking. It is my gift to her. My wedding gift. Wedding gift? Great dreamer. <laughs> silken finery. And made welcome at our wedding feast, guest of honor. And oh, what a feast we all shall enjoy! She is sick. We've got Maligaro's key. The key to access the den. The den is a place. In which we fought the white bear previously. And you get a trial here. Justice is slender and perfidious, fraught with missteps of ambition and despair, egotism and doubt. Should you choose this road, beware those who would waylay your hopes and disembowel your dreams. Remain sure and remain true. Blades? More blades. Ah, ah, ah. It's all about timing. See them. Have to sit straight if I don't want to get killed like that. Mm -hmm. Time. Hello. And that's number three. The former is wisdom, the latter is fear. Now let's get out of here.
Nope. So we're back where we found the Belfield gem and where Fidelitas was first uh, found by us. So we need to circle this place. Alright, the piety escaped through here, huh? You remember? But she used a teleport. We are using a secret passenger. Oh, no waypoint. Do we have all the waypoints up to now? Yeah, we do. Surely there will be no care bears here this time. I mean, you know, dangerous ones, scary ones. Yeah, we're going for the act, going and going. But there's still no intel. Or oh, the great white bones. So we had a necromancer who resurrected the bear we killed. Ah, no rest for the wicked. We're going for them like hat knife for butter, but we still don't know. What's our actual, you know, big enemy in this act? Of course, taking care of ah, of Chevron in the previous act. Was like one step, just as we took care of Maligaro this act, and as we will be taking care of Chevron, not Chevron, nah, thirdly in the next one. But well, we had a Brian King, and now we only have that. Uh, Master of a million faces or fists, whatever. Kira. Well, previously it was Nessa from the village who got meddled in the head by a god now we know that Grust is of course possessed, but Silk is talking some 
Don't stop, nevertheless. to Rala Cash. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be fun. Let's clear the surroundings so no one will interrupt me while I read them. A bit from this side and so. Yeah, a lot of heads and skins. Hi Lord Relakesh, I'm but lowly of those scam yet you, a god of thousand faces, have looked at me and deemed me worthy of your cause. I've offered willingly my flesh and blood, you shall now have my thoughts to use as you see fit. I only ask that you let me serve forever as your holy, as one of your holy clans, Allow me to bring the light of your belonging to this whole bloody continent. My greatest desire is to see you, your ancient kingdom remade and your enemies cover at your feet. Not signed. <sighs> Any final thoughts and improvements before going forth? Iron dexterity, cold resistance, lightning resistance, all the resistance. Yeah. Ah. Fire and lightning. Less rarity, but we should manage. As you can see, our freezing pulse is becoming more and more capable. We are still uh, just a bit around 22,000. Let's go. Woohoo! So the stack and board voice are from Ralakesh. This must be the relic. A big totem made of heads. And throwed something. Something, something, Hillian. And we've got Grust. Something of the forest. It's hard to read all those descriptions when you wanna make sure that they don't kill you. Ah, poor fella. Okay, so it was a totem made into a resemblance of some places. Now it looks more like clay. When you try to control everything, you ultimately control nothing. Brother Kesh has never quite been able to grasp that. Ah. Oh. Avoiding bleeding. Looks nice. Mm. Perfect. 
Northern Forest. Let's see if they have a waypoint for us. They do, but there's not actually a way to go back. What you tell me of Silk, this I understand, though I do not want to. I have spent many nights pondering Silk's journey. Why he has stepped from hmm. the spirit path. Now I know. He has walked into the eight arms of blind lust, Arakali. Silk is a warning to us all. He is trying to take the short trail to greatness. To the story spirit has made for him. Silk tries to steal his story, but now he holds only a lie. Please. You must find the place where this Arakali sleeps in her web of shadow. You must stop Silk before he wakes mm. her. A mistake that we all will come to regret. The spirit tells me this is so. It's selling time. Well, why not actually make any enchantment on this so we could get some, uh, I don't know, resistances. Uh. Cold chaos. Into the most dreaded of thickets you must go, I'm afraid. For there Grothkull, the despairing, souls and schemes. The vow laid waste to her kingdom and placed her slaughtered children at her feet. Hmm. Her grief enveloped Grothkull, transformed her, flooded her mind with a singular thought. To share her suffering with those who had murdered her daughters. Though she has returned, her sanity has not. There is no fury like a mother bereaved. I wonder if Gratko would still grieve for her children if she knew the truth. Huh. The Spinner of Shadows had no aspirations until Gratko's daughters plotted against her. They saw her power over the people, her miraculous potions, her intoxicating lusts. They feared Arakali, thought she might threaten their legacy. Yet that's the curious thing about spiders. They only leave their web where we force them to. A temptress and a predator. Thou legends say she crawled up from the blackest of pits during the creation of the world. No. Her beginnings were far more mundane. A mortal harlot whose endless lust for loin and treacherous <coughs> delight saw her transformed into the very image of her dark desires. The Spinner of Shadows, they once called her. She sees herself as a regular goddess of love, and has the romantically forged temple to prove it. That's where you'll find her. Yet there's little romance to the lady herself. At least... I ah, shit. Poor Silk. Answering the call of a royal invitation, I visited the Spinner of Shadows as an emissary for a small and fragile alliance of gods. Mostly weak deities huddling together in terror of being consumed by their greaters. At this time, Queen Arakali ruled an empire, and so invited me to gaze upon her mighty works with appropriate wonder. If I had looked past this pretense, I may have chanced to see her hidden desire to have me share her bed. For years, I lay trapped in her webbed sheets. Some days, she enjoyed my prowess. <laughs> Other days, we enjoyed each other. Yet this illusion of love and leisure simply veiled the morbid reality that I was not free to leave. I languished under her bewitching spell until the day the spider was betrayed by her own flies and sealed within that temple of her own <laughs> making. Remember, 
I'd be missing my granddaughter, something terrible. You know, I used to tell Lily bedtime stories till she fell asleep in me arms. She loved the ones about Kishara, a tough as nails foul lassie, said to have explored every coast, cove, and bay of this blasted continent with the help of her star. Some nifty artifact she nabbed from somewhere on her first voyage. Young Lily, she were fascinated by Kishara's star. Said to be fair homing with thaumaturgy, able to guide its mistress wherever she be fixing to journey. Methinks me granddaughter liked to imagine that one day she'd hold the star in her hands and explore the outer reaches of this world. There ain't no way I'm making that journey with nothing to show for it. She looks up to me, does Lily. So, I'm reckoning that star might put a smile on her pretty face. With such a gift in hand, I'd maybe have the guts to go visit my granddaughter instead of skulking here like some craven ghost. That's if some kind and brave soul fetched it for me. Yeah. Well, I at least uh, admire that you decided to change your mind. Legend has it, Kishara got herself in some hot water with a certain queen at Ziri. Details are vague as to exactly how, but by all accounts, that Ziri were the most understanding of lasses. <laughs> Kishara, being the free-spirited sort, probably just pricked the royal ass with some spiky facts from the outside world. Almost lost her head for her trouble, Kishara. And Ziri took her ship and made sacrifices of her crew, forced the poor girl into hiding. Still, Kishara being of a wily inclination like myself, she slipped through at Ziri's talons and right out of the Empire. But before she left, Kishara hid the star somewhere near the causeway that leads into the old Val city up north, just in case she got caught, I suppose. Something like that, in the hands of a tyrant like Atsiri. Who knows what trouble she might have found with it. Well, it's good that it's way over. Ah, uh, is a... Uh... Life expectancy of a typical Val Trust old Whalen. Don't. You truly are a hero of the modern age, succeeding where even the ancient Val could not. I must say I'm really quite relieved. For a while there I feared we were headed towards another theocratic dictatorship. Exile allowed me to be free of one. I had no wish to experience another. You deserve to be rewarded for your efforts. Here, something with a little insight would suit your purposes nicely. Ah. Passive skill point. What? He's intending to make matrimony with Arakali? My word, that's quite a story even for Silk. Yes, I know that name, and the place to which it is purportedly attached. A temple to the north, now in ruins. If Silk intends unholy congress with this Arakali, that is the most likely place we would seek it. Yes, I know of Grothkull, the grieving mother. She featured quite prominently in some of the vowel texts I restored during my time at the museum in Theopolis. After the deaths of her children, Queen Grothkull fled north, eventually finding respite amongst the refugees of her own shattered realm. Yet these loyalists saw their own queen as a weapon, a tool for vengeance. They nurtured her pain, transfiguring sorrow into hatred, hatred into violence. Like a grizzled bear, Grothkull descended into animalism and ferocity. 
Yet her caretakers foolishly underestimated the agony their bereaved queen harbored in her heart. Like a bear caught in a trap, Grothkull wrenched free of her human loyalties and slew her followers to the last woman and child. Through devastation, Grothkull ascended to divinity. Grothkull's pain has transcended ages, and she will vent that pain upon any and all she encounters until her grief is finally That's actually quite sad. From what I can recall, Arakali was a vile fertility goddess, a rather unsettling union of sexuality and mortality. Whilst usually presenting herself as a large arachnid, Arakali would often assume human form, a ruse intended to lure mortals into the act of copulation. The entries were vague about the gender of her prey. After satiating her carnal desires, she would then quench her divine mm. thirst, draining her erstwhile lover of all bodily fluid. Her acolytes would then collect the desiccated husk and give it a decorative placement in Arakali's unholy temple. I fear that Silk knows not the true nature of the marriage he so desperately seeks. Shit. One less twisted intellect perverting our world. There is still much to be done, but at least we can rest easier in the knowledge that Melagaro and his foul creations will trouble Rayclass no longer. Here, I know that you and Groost didn't see eye to eye, but I'm sure he would have wanted to recognize this deed. It's the act of a warrior, after all. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Ah. We need three red, so let's go with this one. We have to hit this. The close that. Yes, I thank you. Though I loved him, I know Groost was lost to me the very moment he touched that vile abomination. I will weep over his passing for many more nights to come, but I am happy that you avenged his honor and freed him from his torment. There's an Asmeri shrine tucked away in the northern forest. Groost took me there, told me it was a memorial to those who had gone before him, a place where their spirits could rest. When he passed, he wanted his remains to be laid to rest with the bones of his people. His body. I find it difficult to even think about it, but I doubt it will ever be recovered. Yet there might still be a way. He gave me his necklace, the fangs he earned when he rose from boyhood to manhood, handed it to me for safekeeping only moments before... before Relakish. It's almost as if he knew what was to come. <sighs> Please, could you Lord, deliver Lord, this Lord, necklace to the shrine for me? Lord, Put Lord, the ghost to rest. I would do it myself, but the journey to the northern forest is not what it was. These lands have changed, and not for the better. <sighs> Shit. So we're finally gonna have the dexterity burst plant uh, for enabling us the use of the golem stone.
It's raining bears. Great fitted, here we come. Now at least it's uh, very possible that our Akali will be our next target. Yep, and she even has a shrine here. Ah. As her fury grew to blot out the sun, the mother's grief grew to eclipse the land. Beautiful and her heart stamped across the realms of Arakali, crushing her subjects, blood and bone, into the trembling earth. With her empire on the brink of ruination, our queen, our spinner of shadows, hatched a desperate plan. Fate, injury and defeat, Arakali rode well into the heart of the great cavern. There she entreated her with her enemy in unyielding silk, and then with prodigious bravery and strength, she had. Uh, brought the very stones tumbling down upon Gratkal's un antlered head. She's got antlers? Shit. So, uh, one lady was scheming against the other one. And, uh, then Gratkul's daughter started plotting against Arakali. She got pissed, so she killed them. And... Crowd cool went bonkers. She went on a killing spree. Aimed both at, at her people and at Arakali's people. And in the end, she got trapped in a cave. Shit! The dreadstone is here, whatever. Hell, that scared me. Shit. Another firefly.
And the corrupted zone also. Okay, fireflies for Yena. Shame she didn't mention it. Okay, first let's level up. I should be able to do it. Bang! Plated boots. I need to make more room. You are like the frog that strikes the fly faster than I can see. No. Carry your bright bugs mm -hmm. to Arakali's gate. We will meet there and brew our fire dew. Not here. Too much to burn. Too many to make blind. Hmm. Do I need to carry them? Shit. Okay, let's hide the currency items. Five seven forty nine. Five okay. Nope. Ah, so wrong. Keep your life to your own. Okay. So first, the dexterity. Ah, yeah. It's not gonna be enough because we change our other the golden ring. Still, we needed it. It's ah. Uh, a prerequisite to our increased health. A corrupted zone is gonna be way easier than a god. At least that's my assumption. Especially that the debuff, or actually uh, the opponent buff, doesn't really make any doesn't make it any harder. I am no beast of burden. Shit. Okay, but it's just a chromatic orb, so Okay, we've got a reading there, so we're close. Ooh, someone is raising the dead. Someone was raising the dead. Okay. Make room for the boards. Our queen demanded we look into the gems for our salvation. 
we see ourselves reflected in those facets twisted beyond recognition. We got crap! Time to go up ASAP! Whoa! It's a bear with antlers! Shit is real! Ooh -ho. Lady knows how to smack, but we know how to smack harder! Fingers crossed. Physical reduction. Hmm. Okay, so back. Upstairs. Let's hope it didn't reset. It's not gonna be a big setback. But... Okay, it did. Okay, the next location is here. So we need to explore a bit more. To pay respect to Grust. Yeah, 
Whooper. I don't know if there are many ancestor ancestors uh, felt really you know. Mad with the fact that we decided to lay Gruz to death. The Kazuray. Uh, we're gonna have to teleport. I have failed my poor Groost, not being able to return his bones to the resting place of his people. Still, we have done all we could, considering yeah. the circumstances. Groost was a practical man at heart, he would understand. His ancestor is dead end. Here are some of Groost's most treasured possessions. I'm sure he would have wanted you to have one. Okay, amulet, sir. In a moment. <laughs> nope. Fire resistance and rarity. No. Cold resistance, life and rarity. Nope. Sanctified, sanctified, sanctified. Okay. It doesn't work like that anymore. Ah. Speed regeneration higher resistance. Shit. Hello. We're not scaling for physical damage, unfortunately. So the grieving mother sleeps once more. Her story has come to fascinate me, and your conquest of her makes for a satisfying dramatic climax, don't you think? I'm but an old man living vicariously through your life. As history seems intent on repeating itself, I should record it in a book. An historical account of the goddess Grothkoll and the legendary Stop. champion who defeated her. Talking. Yes, the title Bullshit. Will work, but it will suffice for now. Here, consider this offering as an advance on the royalties we shall reap post publication. That is, if there is anyone in Rayquaza. She got so annoying. Now, let's find the waypoint and the entrance to the... Uh, to the city.
It's really nice that ruins like this resurfaced after probably hundreds of years. Got some lore. We've got Alva here, but I'm really not into... Uh, more content for now. As our queen's body was reborn, so too was her mind. Awash with visions of future and past, she burst from the deluge, gasping with terror. She had seen her empire in ruins, her keeper ground in the dust. And atop her throne sat the children of Grotgold, their long white hair fluttering in the winds of victory, their laughter as saw blades in Arakali's hearts. Yet as the vision poisoned her dreams, Arakali poisoned the vision. Once, twice, thrice, the children of Grotgol fell, crying their crimson tears, and how their mother grieved. Yes, yeah, so she had a vision, she killed them, and the, the spiral of hate went on and on. KS damage is a pain in the neck. I am no beast of burden. If you don't have the resistances. Just in time. Yeah, yeah. Ah, here we are. But they're not making it any easier when it comes to finding a suitable place for a break. Since there is no waypoint at the beginning of a level. So we're going through the ruins now. Ah. 
in search of the temple. Our great goddess, we worship her, and in so doing, we may become her. Healer of hearts, Arakali with the juices of lust, Ugh. and venom, uh, venoms of spiders. She brought many back from the brink of death, only she was worthy to rule. The porcelain queen, Grutkul, disgraced my ancestors, stained them with drought, starved them with famine, blighted them with plague. It was with juice, justice and truth that my ancestors shattered the porcelain queen reign and brought our messiah to power. Well, oh, okay. So, well, if you have several rulers at the same time, ah, it's negative. Well, is this our moment to have a break? I think it is. Ina, oh, hello. Fireflies. So bright and juicy with flame. Now for the right. I warn you. Stand back and be not afraid of what you see. And be not afraid for me. The spirit guides and protects. Though I may change, I shall still be, will always be, Yina. Okay. What? Uh, okay, yeah. Love letter. Your soft whispers beneath earth tingle my skin. That's my solid. Of love against my loins. I sleep not. I hear your name inside my skull. Arakali. Ooh. Poor, poor, poor guy. myself to you, my lady of Val. I promise love, for I am that man you have waited on. Corrupt corpse lovers claim to worship you, call you spirit of shadows. But you Faster, son. Shit. Sweet, your soul. Yes, sweet, Arakali. Nah. I have found your altar. I will speak the call. I will return you to beauty. I will raise you from black pits of despair and together we shall rule, take us in glory forever. Poor, poor guy. Okay, let's level up. And make an invisible bright. Freezing pulse leveled up. Great. love might allow you to shed become goddess of love once more. I pledge myself to you, my lady of love. I promise love. Yes, yeah, so for now, uh, it's either the problem of the Val Queens or with the people writing down history. We heard about three queens, three Val Queens. All of them were crazy, they were tyrants, they were killers. And sadists. All of them.
Wah. Invisible break, here we come. Temple of Decay, here we come. Ooh. Ah. Well, I did some uh, off screen action before starting the recording to sum it up I uh, cleared my stash a bit and uh, I bought two thingies I bought Geoffrey's crest it's a very nice helmet I uh, use it very often while uh, starting a playthrough starting a league. I bought it for one alchemy orb, so that's three alchemy orbs pending total. And I bought a Karui ward. It's a it's a very early game amulet, very common. I bought it for one uh, chisel and. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that it gives me as much dexterity as it can. So I, uh, I had to make some shuffling. Uh, my uh, defense mechanism with casting damage taken and mortal call was moved to the gloves. And I moved the curse part to the helmet because apart from resistances it also improves uh, the level of the socket gems by one. And due to the fact that I got the Karui ward, so my dexterity got higher, I switched Frostbite to Projectile Weakness. So, uh, we're gonna tackle the problem that the further we go, the higher elemental resistance, resistances uh, the monsters have. So, we're gonna, uh, you know, push through their defenses uh, by increasing our projectile damage. And, Increased dexterity also enabled me to finally uh, put the Summon Ice Golem gem into my equipment. So here is Mr. Golem. And now, if we do the summoning and we cast a curse, we've got, uh, well, 25,000 damage. Well, let's meet uh, Arakal. The movement speed from the amulet is a nice addition. We mainly took it for the projectile damage and the uh, projectile speed as our damage is lower uh, as time passes as the projectile flies then the fact that our projectiles fly faster Results in having higher damage on longer distances.
Well, they're not original at all. Uh, in terms of themes with those gods while we were strolling through the beach for the first time we were reading about calm then when we were going through the beach for the second time we had to fight Tukuhama so that's like a level up uh, let's do it like this where we were going towards uh, the prison we fought the goat man after fighting the goat man we fought a bigger goat and uh, well we're fighting spiders again our temple of decay was built so that we her chosen might sustain our great goddess in her pursuit of the secrets that last and life would keep from us. Ah. We, her followers, brought all assortments of venomous creatures and laid them at her feet, yet it was the spider she most coveted, and as the divine energies Wolf, their destinies about her body, our queen Arakari was reborn. Arakari the miracle, Arakari the mighty Arachnophage, a beauteous creature of immortal power and unfathomable wisdom. Well, at least Arakari has some proper background set up. Okay, you see how the projectile is going? Bright Blade
We have to be careful while leveling up gems that require dexterity. Our build isn't very, very rich in uh, dexterity nodes. Temple of Decay, level 2. Even as our courageous Arakali forms the foundations of a new empire within the ruination of the old, a fresh threat was born in the shadow of the mountains. A creature so devoid of divinity, so beyond humanity, that it drew the very essence from Akali as the spider imbibes the life of the trapped moth. Our queen's medicines had once sustained us, now famine and plague ravage what little remained of our lands. As the beast of the mountains grew, our Arakali waned, until helpless as a child she lost even the faith of her most devoted, the Temple of Decay. I feel the shame for my ancestors as the spider's venom burns in my belly. When our queen needed them most, her people betrayed her, bound her silk and left her to languish in the bowels of a pyramid, just as Arakali had done to Gurku so many years before. Now she has returned, but it is not vengeance she wants. She's no mindless Groot girl. Arakali, goddess of love, wishes only to embrace the world as she wishes she had been embraced. Uh huh. Bullshit. That's my opinion.
Yeah, if you have a temple in someone's name, don't believe in everything you can read in it. Well, at least not only spiders can be seen here. We even had a couple of Val boys. Know what we need, guys? We need more slots and we need more totems. We're quite fortunate anyway. We have a five length uh, armor, five uh, connected sockets. But, uh, oh well, the sooner we get a six socketed. Armor the better. And the best thing that would happen would be if we got a tabula rasa dropped. Since I'm gonna mention a fact, uh, I'm sure it's not gonna repeat. But, during my previous three Liga playthroughs, I had uh, the Tabula Rasa drop in two leagues. Uh, in uh, the Synthesis League, I had it quite quickly, I might say. Like during the first three days of playing. So I saved a lot of currency. And while I was playing the trail, I got two. So fingers crossed. Let it drop. Whoa, fifty stacks. That's three hundred percent. Yeah, so if we fight boss monsters, it's best if they have some bodies defending them to stack up my attack. Yeah. 
Is this it? Or not yet? This is it. Okay, so let's run a bit more here. So we actually level up. It's not something that you could uh, notice during my run, but after fighting Kitava for the first time, we not only got our resistances lowered, but we also get a penalty to our experience when we die. 5% for each death. Not that I plan to die, but I would just feel a bit more confident. Well, we might have to touch the monolith. Long story short. Uh, of course, while uh, later making a separate episode on this, I'm gonna repeat myself. But... The Legion League is about these timeless monoliths. Uh, some century centuries even old battles are uh, frozen into the mana lips. so when I touch them all those people caught in a interdimensional rift will appear and if I start attacking them they will remain in this realm and they have some, you know, fancy uh, rewards. Just be careful not to position yourself poorly so you don't die. And still not enough. Ah, oh, hell. Woohoo! 
Ooh! One big ass spider. You have to watch out for the lasers. And she just ate him. We have the fox here, so Yina is uh, providing support. Woohoo! Well, second major god defeated. Way less stressful than the Brian King. And uh, his uh, bonus is better. You hear that? No. It is spirit singing as does the fly who escapes the web. Yes, it is most happy with us. And with your strange friend there, too. He is a god. Yes, I can see that much. But why he helps you? Of all questions, that one you must have answered to. Now I must return to Broken Bridge. So tired now. We will speak more of Silk and Sorrow then. As you can see, Arakali is made out of uh, some mechanisms and actual human bodies. Poor, poor silk. Which button was responsible for? The world skin. So, Act 7. That was easy. Now, we're moving to CERN. As you can see, it's not that straightforward again. We're gonna have to find a different way to reach it. I cut the crap I'm talking here. Ah, still, we have some unfinished business I want to uh, finish. Ah, yeah. English language uh, is quite. At English. Many an artist of Esmerian descent has engaged in the sad worship of that sultry arachnid. But you looked in those. Yep, we talked about that. So, this is Kishara's famed star. Just as I reckoned, it won't point me in any one direction. It can't make up its mind. I suspect you to me. To make up mine, I feel a tremor of prophecy coming over me, like some scallywags just stomped over my grave. Like old sea lily, there's to be a ah, don't be so hard on yourself, Waylam. If that's what the future has in store, then it can keep it. I wish a long and vibrant life for the girlie, one free of the trouble that an old dead. Back in here, like I might bring upon you. Here, our ways divide. 
What would you like to know, Exa? Poor Silk. Like yeah. before him, Silk succumbed to a most insidious disease. Ambition. That craving for greatness. An irresistible compulsion to leave one's <sighs> mark on the world. There's another name for marks like that. Scars. Uh-huh. While they were highly advanced in their technology, the Val were rather brutish in their social practices. I find it rather baffling to think of the Val as a people who believed in science and progress, and yet constructed elaborate sacrificial altars in the centers of their cities. Judging by the construction of this particular ruin, I would say that the city rose to prominence during the reign of Queen Tetzlapoka, who some scholars refer to as a waif of disturbing proclivities. She was a devotee of Arakali, and according to the literature, had a deep fascination with mortality and the inert human form. The histories tell how the queen would request her subjects to deposit the bodies of their deceased loved ones upon the steps of her palace. The corpses would be promptly taken inside to be used for... Unfortunately, most scholars fell into hysterical conjecture at that point. Huh. At least I hope it was conjecture. Huh. Keep your wits about you. Hello. Go with courage. Roost hunted too far from the lands of spirit and fell prey to a spiritless one. I am sad at how he passed. An ugly death. Yet I am thankful that he suffers no more. That Glad he I could help. Spirit, that he can rest now. I miss my friend. Silk knew the spirit as I did. We would talk understand it together now there is no one but me well you can always talk to Vela unfinished business in Lionel's watch we didn't discuss the death of the brine I'd hoped for a chance to see Nessa again dreamed it like some poor bloody child believing in fairy tales no She's not one of us anymore. But at least she's not like Mervale either. Can't overlook a mercy like that. Who knows? Perhaps Nessa is better off this way. Not like this is much of a home to come back to anyway. Look, I know you did what you could. And for that, you'll always have my thanks. <sighs> Stay sharp out there. Clearly the old Brine King wasn't worth his salt. A fish out of water, if ever there was. But I suppose, as someone wise once said, you can't teach a crab to walk straight. Too much. Yeah, be hmm. honest with you. All this fishy mirth is me just swimming around a tricky topic. Nessa. She's not coming back to us, is she? Can't say I'm surprised. What with everything she's been through, what she's become. I wish her all the happiness she can find out there in the sea. More than she could muster on this God's awful land of ours. You've the debt of the mighty Black Crest under your feet. And old Waylam himself to man. Uh -huh. Well, I'll be a pirate's monkey, mate. You sure do know how to travel in style, Exile. The Black Crest. She lives again. And my granddaddy. Still can't believe Mervel did that to him. The bilesome bitch. At least his spirit roams free once again. Wonder if he'll come and visit his favorite granddaughter one more time. Anyways, with the Brine King gone, you've done a fine thing for us seafarers. The waters won't no longer pander to the whim of an overgrown, bloody crustacean. And damn me if I don't feel a stirring in me loins. It's the ocean. Calling like a lust starved lover. But for now, bugger it all. I'll be sticking about Lion Eyes Watch until they get me a new ship. Oh, don't feel sorry for me. With me womanly wiles as sharp as they are, I'll be having Tarkley help me pass the time. 
Just you see. Ah, thing, thing. Okay, yeah. So we might be getting uh, the next two points to improve our dexterity. Uh, that's one. And now, 30 more here. That's 104, and we need a uh, freaking 150. Yeah. Ideal. Well, well, well. We may have to switch to some more dexterity oriented uh, equipment, but that's not a problem for today. Before we start, Act 8, I'm gonna have to visit uh, the labyrinth again, and uh, maybe not even once. I'm not sure if I'm uh, in the mood for theory crafting, but uh, due, to some, due to some changes made uh, in betrayal, my head hurts a bit when I'm thinking about the part with skills that would summon the totem, summon two totems instead. And my head hurts because I don't know if it wouldn't be better to go for conviction of power first to make use of uh, the endurance charges and the power charges. Um, but to use them fully, I would need to uh, spend two points here and two points here. And I'm not sure about that. If uh, if it's going to be optimal, if I would do it, because it's generally a very, very nice boost. To be honest, well, if we're summoning totems, we've got those charges maxed. But, uh, the basic number is three. So that's uh, a bonus of 12% uh, attack speed, 12, ah, sorry, not frenzy, eh. Eh, power, yeah, chance for having a critical strike. Uh, it's 200% constantly. Yeah. Two hundred percent to making a critical 
Ah. Strike. More uh, elemental penetration. And uh, better survivability. Here. Well, uh, we would have uh, nine percent more total damage. We would summon two instead of one, but I'm constantly leveling this one up. They probably have the same effect, so my gain would be less, but while uh, having this one working, I would have five totems. Uh, Five totems. Mm. Yeah, my head hurts. And that's why I don't like to hear the craft too much. Thank you for watching. Get ready for Act 8 and for the Lord's Labyrinth. I'm waiting for your comments and uh, See you later, alligators. Bye, 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 bye. Mm -hmm.